Your thinks it's terrible. Okay. So I think it's kind of okay. Okay. In, okay. In, in, that's, a, that's a nice healthy balance. Yeah. Do you, do you speak German? I don't, unfortunately. I mean, it's tough. It's it's not easy. Um, obviously, we should be more versed. Um, I should have a natural affinity for it because of Afrikaans. Oh, sure. You sure. know, and we've got a. But that's like a Dutch dialect, right? It's, it's basically a dialect of Dutch. Right. You know? So it's. Uh, um, and also my grand my grandparents are German and my 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 mother speaks fluent German. So oh, heard, so you have no excuse. I have no excuse. Right. And I and I was a bit arrogant with it. Then I thought like um, I'll come to Germany and I'll just pick it up like in six months. It's no problem. But it was the same with me growing up in Canada because uh, Canada's bilingual. We have the English and the French. Oh, where where were you? In- well, I was in the English part, so okay. I'm in uh, Ontario province. Okay. Um, Neil Young. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, fam. Yes, big time. Yeah, yeah, nice, he's nice. Ma- he's, he's mega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's fantastic. Um, but but at the you know a time in school, I'm in like grade eight, yeah. and I've got to learn French. I don't want to learn French. Right. I, it just it had no interest for me. Okay. So I took it uh, as required and then dropped it. Okay. And you know I I got like a you know kind of a basic. Do you, you but wish now, now? Yeah. In hindsight, now I'm a bit older. Yeah. Hopefully, a bit more mature. Yes. Um, I wish I learned it. Yeah, because it just opens doors. Yes. Having said that, um, uh, maybe I don't know if you've seen this, but there's this technology that they're developing, yes. where you just pop a little earpiece in your ear, and if you're speaking a different language to me, it translates and talks in my ear. That's insane. Yeah, I have seen that. I so, have seen that. Yeah. So no worries. Yeah. In, in a couple of years, yes. we don't need to worry about learning. Well, language. like I, I, I don't know if if you if you've heard in, well if you know anything about um, uh, Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink uh, company. I, I did read something about that. It's mad, and I have to say, it's something that you know, if you'd spoken to me spoken to me about it three years ago, I would have, or even yeah, or, or more, I would have been like, I don't want any part of this shit. Right. But. The conversations that he's had around this with multiple different people has kind of opened my mind up a lot to the fact that, you know, we we will, those things will inevitably happen to us, you know, and obviously we will have a choice, but it will get to the point where it makes no sense not to have it. You right. know? Like for, Ho- hopefully we'll have a choice. Well, ho- ho- yeah, hopefully <laughs> we'll have a choice. But he was like saying, like, for example, a language will be a download. It'll be like exactly, going, exactly, and then I was like, "Whoa, that's fucking cool!" Yeah, but the other downside is all these people who are language teachers or translators. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting yeah. topic about yes. the future. Okay, yes. because I'm reading so much about the advance in technology and how many jobs are are going to go away. Right. In the you know, in ten years, fifteen okay. years, twenty years. Yeah. I mean, you, you've already got you don't you don't need. Technically, pilots well, to fly a plane. Yeah, or a, bo- a lorry driver. Or a example. lorry driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E- exactly. Yeah. Um, so that, that, but that's a really, uh, it's quite an interesting topic. Yes. Because especially with AI, yes. a lot of these, um, I would say, I, I call them binary, black and white industries. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, like maybe a, a medical uh, profession where they analyze data or they analyze. Results, yes. right? Where yeah. the com- where right now the computers can do it better. Yes. Uh, even engineering, certain parts of engineering. Yeah. Um, I think that's just going to be fed into a computer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. the nice thing is, I think the creative process will will be certainly lagging behind. Yes. Yes. So that's what I'm hopeful for, yes. and that's what all the indicators are saying. Well, that's yeah. That that's also what what I understand as well, and that they that that like you know that's why it's 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 more important than ever. I believe to you know be yourself and to um, and to do things the way that you would do them. You know, it's not uh, it's not to say that you can do a half-assed job, but I mean it's it's important to retain your character and your nuances in your creative process, for example, because those are the things that a machine is not going to be able to replicate. Exactly, exactly. Um, AI, as I understand it, and I'm, I'm no IT expert for sure, but it's still based on inputs and it's still binary, yes. right? Like computers, but it's just it's putting algorithms together and matching things up uh, and, and doing some learning on, on some level. But the creative process, which, you know, if you look at what we understand about the brain, we actually don't know that much still. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. also a bit of undiscovered uh, scientific 
uh, area. Yes. Um, but the create the creativity and and what makes someone creative, and and you know how do they draw on things to, uh, you know any kind of inspirations to put in the brain, you know sieve out, yes. and then and then output something that's unique and individual. Yeah, like right? a filter. Like a filter. Yes. Exactly. And uh, I, you know, I think the brain is still the ultimate uh, supercomputer for that. Why? Right. Um, well, we'll see what happens in the future. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I hope yeah. I'm not proven wrong, no, <laughs> but uh, no. that to me, you know, and it also just makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because because we also we do a lot of uh, creativity with passion. We do a lot of it with emotion, where is machines that, can have emotion. I'm a yet. total. Um, uh, I, I'm t- I'm totally not qualified to talk on this at all, and I, I f- forgive my ignorance. But like, is that part of the, the sensory, like pleasure part of the brain? Is that your is that your co- that's not your cortex, or is it your cortex? I, I don't know either. Oh, okay. So the, the thing <laughs> I'm is, I'm definitely not a brain expert. Right, I just I just okay. pick up snippets here and there. Right. So he like he was basically saying that you know the one part of the brain is 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 all sensory and pleasure and uh, mm. and and that's something that uh, that nobody would ever want to get rid of. You know. Right. And uh, and then there's the other part that might be lagging in certain like de- certainly computational um, uh, areas, which is like you know where all the analytical stuff uh, happens. Happens, which actually, you know, we are really bad at, you know, and right, uh, and th- and those things can be enhanced, you know, right. which which then you think, well, like, you know, it'd be pretty cool, like somebody who's like terrible at maths, L- to go like into, me, uh, and yeah, well, like most well, creative, yeah, uh, right, most yeah. designers, and then so. go into like a fucking maths competition, you know, right, and just right, destroy, right. you know, right. for example, you know, well, look, look at the history of, uh, so we had the industrial revolution, right. Uh, you know, the turn of the century. Right. And that went from kind of an agriculture based and, okay. you know, there was there was businesses, shipbuilders and things like this. But that was really the the advent of the assembly line and mass production. Okay. Right. Uh, and and all the, the jobs that came out of that. Yes. I mean, engineering is, is basically born to, you know, in its current state. Right? How many engineers are there um, from the Industrial Revolution? Okay. Certainly boosted into a you know, one of the, the leading professions okay. as far as population. Then you go to the 80s, uh, you know, computers were kind of bubbling along, but they were the size of rooms in the 60s stuff. All of a sudden it became a huge profession. Yeah. To the point where, where um, it seems like universities were lagging behind and people were, were going and getting kind of training and then just going in and becoming IT experts in these big companies without any kind of formal, you know, degree, like a master's degree and... Okay circuitry or, or yeah. whatever they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was reading something very interesting. It was a chart that basically showed from about 1850 till today. And the trend is manufacturing, job, this is jobs, manufacturing and farming, agriculture, jobs is going down, probably mainly due to automation and, and, and things like this. Uh, but what's going up is service industry okay. and the creative industry. Okay. And they're going up, you know, on a, on a quite a, a nice steep incline. Right. So that kind of gives me uh, a bit of hope. Well, a positive feeling for for the future. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. For, so, for for us, for, for us, designers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so James, let's let's. I mean, you've obviously uh, um, you've done a lot. You've been to a lot of places. Can we like go back to you starting out? Like, how did you come to the realization that you wanted to study car design or be a car designer? I mean, it's a bit cliche. It's yeah. it's the story everyone has. Okay. You know, sitting in the math class, really not interested in math. Um, so drawing spaceships, motorbikes, cars, tanks, whatever. You know, in my math book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and just really having this passion. But being from a small town in Canada, and this is back in the, the late 80s, wow. we're, I know, shocking for me too. Um, car design was like, uh, it didn't exist, you know? Engineers did that, right? Yes. Um, but I had, a, I had a wonderful teacher, an art teacher, which was one of my only good subjects uh, that I excelled in. I also like geography and history and these kind of things. Um, and And, he said, you know, you, you, you're really talented. What do you want to do? I said, oh, I want to be a car designer. But, you know, I, 
So you the, said that you said you knew that in school, right? You well, wanted to be a car. Yeah, designer. I mean, I, I love cars. You know, I also had the, like the Lamborghinis okay. and posters all on yeah. my wall and, and everything. And the second I could get my driver's license, I was out there. Um, and he actually did the research for me. This is my high school teacher. Wow. And uh, contacted the GM Institute, which is an engineering institute in Detroit, and they referred to the College for Creative Studies. Okay, CCS. CCS. And make a long story short, I, I worked my ass off, uh, developed a portfolio uh, that summer, and submitted, uh, submitted the portfolio to CCS, and I got in. Um, and and I, I, I heard, and I, I don't have any statistics to back this up, but it does make a little bit of sense. The, the saying was, thousands apply, um, 65 get in to the industrial design program. And what you do after the first year is you do a rotation. Okay. You go into a graphics program, interior program, uh, product design, and automotive. Is this on your degree, your undergraduate degree? This is the degree. first year, so okay. you're, it'll be your freshman year okay. when, if you're going okay. by the U.S. Uh, okay. That's what standard. they call the first year in the university. Right, okay. freshman, you're okay. freshman. Okay. Um, and then you do these modules, and you have these reviews uh, uh, at the end, and 90% want to go into automotive because that's what the school is famous for. That's what people go there for. 20 get in. Okay. Right? Okay. Fast forward, four-year degree, we graduate with 11 through attrition because you'll, you'll present every, six, every semester your work. If they don't like it, you're on probation, two probations, you're out of the school. Oh, wow. It was tough. Wow. It was tough. Uh, four got jobs that year out of the... Uh, the interviews where the companies came to the school. So who, what were the main companies then? Ford, GM? Ford and no, GM had a hiring freeze. Oh wow. Uh, the, the industry was really in the in a trough. Um, they, they actually came and put a, a notice on the, so on this the, was what, on the early, school early, wall. <laughs> early 90s, yeah. Early, uh, I graduated in 92. Okay. Again, okay. it's going, when we used to sketch on paper. Okay. Okay. Um, and no, they actually put a notice saying, you know, we apologize. We have a hiring freeze. We won't be taking any students this year. And they were the biggest. They, they, were, the, they were the biggest, right? It was tough. It was really tough. And I guess most of the graduates over there were hoping to, get, well, to stay in Detroit, right? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. It was quite okay. international. Okay. There was, you know, okay. some people from Detroit, but there was people from everywhere. Okay. Um, the, the good news is, you fast forward, I, know, I mean, because it was a small class, yes. most of them landed quite good jobs, but had to kind of go through a little bit more of a painful process than, say, I did, uh, being fortunate enough to be selected to go to Ford at that time. Um, but now a lot of them are, one's a chief designer at Ford, um, you know, and others uh, at, at Chrysler doing very well. So, uh, uh, suppliers. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah. by having good careers. Okay. So, okay. it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. Okay. Um, it, but it was a tough time. When did, uh, when, <laughs> to ask a technological question. When, uh oh. <laughs> when did, no, it's, it's quite simple. When, when did Photoshop come along? Like, I mean, not, not when was it invented, but I mean, I imagine that early 90s, you guys were still all, you were definitely still doing all the, um, uh, like big A2 renders by hand and that sort of thing. Chalk yes. and and uh, you know the the, the pastels yes. and the you know the the baby powder to yes. make it smooth yes. and all. Yeah, 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 absolutely on paper. Okay. The vellum Whoa. two sides. Okay, uh, that's what we did. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, that but was... it was it was nice as well. Yes. There was this kind of creative energy that you lose a little bit when everyone's you know stuck in front of their computer. In the screen, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Did you get a lot out of the, the, I mean, was there somebody that actually said like, this is how you make a, this is how you do a rendering? Or was it kind of like, you know, you guys are in this group of this talented people and you need to push each other and work it out? Well, at Ford or in school? No, 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 in school. In school. Yeah, no, we had great, I have to say, it was a, it was a great curriculum and they okay. had what's called Viscom, visual communication. Yes. And you went to classes and they would get people from the industry. Okay. Being from Detroit was perfect because they get someone from Ford or, and we had some of the top designers come oh, in yeah. and they would do demos for us Mega, and and awesome. you, i mean there's no better way than having top professionals sitting in a classroom doing an hour sketch yes. while you just watch That's... and they had this angled mirror above the the drawing desk where the 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 professionals would do the work so you could all look in the mirror and see exactly what he's doing if you couldn't because we were all crammed around yes, the desk anyways yeah, yeah, yeah. um 
but it was it was fantastic but it was also tough it was i mean because that's not an easy thing the to the, do, the, the credos of the school at the time was the people who went before you built the reputation of this school and as teachers we're here to make sure you maintain at least or improve that reputation wow. so you you kind of had the Internal all the alumni, you know, on your shoulders, yeah. uh, and it did give you a sense of responsibility. Okay. But in the end, it was it was good. Wow. Yeah. But um, I guess you had to really commit to an idea before you start plotting out this big, massive uh, illustration. Like when you, if you, for, sure. for a theme. For yeah. Example. And not only that, you would start to get. I, I would start if I'm doing a sketch. And it's turning out really nice. I'm like, oh, I'm really happy with this, right? And I've been into it like an hour and a half, you know, you know, doing the wheels and the tires and all the details and all this stuff. And then at the end, you screw it up. <laughs> I, I, for me, I, I know, do well, not have the convers- concentration to do that. I would, I would. Yeah, I would. but at the end, you're, you know, and because you're, you're drawing this by hand, right? And then all of a sudden, I, how many sketches I screwed up at the end, and you just get super, you crunch up them all and throw it away. <laughs> but with Photoshop. Layers, right. you know, I do Photoshop yes, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll do like two hundred layers. Right, you know, yeah. it's just so forgiving. Yes, um, which I also I like that you know that technology and that process, but some, I think if you talk to some of the older people in the industry, I think they will feel that, I think they would agree with me that some, this kind of artistic element or this creative side of it, you know, this really going in there and sketching by hand on paper. Uh, or doing tape drawings by hand, full size tape drawings. Right, man. Um, there was something really fun about it. Yeah, no, I, d- I definitely. I mean, the pictures, the the pictures that I saw were th- those things that you're talking about now, and those were the things that enticed me into into the business. Oh, you know? Okay. And then of course the the the, the models, you know, the clay models. Right. I, I was like, what clay is this? You know, and I was at, I was at, I was like, you know, the stuff that I get at school is like this sludge mm. and then i you know you see some there was only like i don't know there are three or four pictures online of like some guy slicking a an exterior clay and i i, I got to in in the uk I, I studied in the uk and i had to do a, an access course at college I and mean, you guys call college university but in the uk college is 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 well, you know, you know it's well, we have both. We have the university. I, I think it's size or something. Okay. I don't know, but okay. we have college and university. Okay. okay. So anyway, they they um at this foundation course that I was busy doing in order to prepare to go to Coventry, they I asked the the three D person like, what clay is this? You know, and she didn't know. Right. So it was like that was it, but but that that it was a know, new world to you. Yeah. If if anything, it's just like I don't give a shit. Like I. I know that I want to do something related to that. Like I was a very tactile 3D right. person, you know, and right. then I am a technophobe as well. So it's like, it, I, I don't know how I ended up doing Alias, but it just Well, Alias evolved. is the ultimate. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, well, that's what they, they do the, um, you know, the Toy Story and all these, yes. these animations, yes. uh, yeah, these, yeah. these fantastic movies. Right. Model them and Alias. Yes. It's an incredible tool. Yes, no, it is. Toronto Company. Yes, it is. Or, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, By the way, yeah, 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 yeah. Throw yeah. out to the, yes. the, to the to the Canadians. To represent the Can- <laughs> Canadians. But I'll tell you a funny story. When I first went to CCS yeah. and saw those beautiful renderings, yes. I tell you, I, I said, these. I was just blown away. I'm like, I will never be able to do that. I just had this kind of like, it was just, it was just so high on an um, artistic pedestal for yes. me. I was just like. You know, it was like, how, how do they do it? Yes. How do they make these beautiful car drawings? I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. Yeah, and I honestly, I said, well, you know, I'll, 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 I'm going to go try. I'll give it a year. Probably yeah. be back home. Okay. Um, and you know, then you go into the system, yeah. boom, 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 yeah. and you pop out, and you're you're a car designer. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, what I can't, you know, it's one thing, it's one thing taking your chalk and coloring it in. For what blows my mind is setting up the proportions for something like that. Like, what is the process for Especially that? Especially if you're doing a sketch this big. Yeah, so what right? is the process for that? I mean, if because you, you see, look, I look back on it now mm. after being in the industry for 10 years, and then I go, okay, 
proportions are quite right there and he hasn't you know this looks a bit rushed but there were there, there's this there's, there's images that you that come up all the time that are like everything is sitting exactly where it needs to sit but there's a trick right. and we sketch on vellum vellum is translucent and you do an underlay okay so you set up your proportions and you do the basic um you know the the two point uh, perspective. Yes. Then you draw your ellipses and you you circle them down so you get your front your, your wheelbase in in the either in the side view or in the in the perspective, and that's your underlay. So you have kind of the building blocks as a stencil underneath. Okay. So that that's the way we do cheat a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay. Um, and then and then you you do your design over it. Right. But normally the designers would then they would have that kind of architecture. So be representing like the platform, let's say, yeah. and then they start to sketch over it. Okay. And then you'd see them also like they flip the paper over because you know the, so the you trick. So look at it from fresh eyes. Yeah. yeah. Because you'll be doing something. You'll. I'm happy with that. You flip it over. Like, ooh, ooh, yeah. that's not that. It's not as good as I thought. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that and and that's the thing that it's like, you see these renderings and right. you you never imagine that you think that somebody's just sat down and like mechanically just done everything just like that and you mm -hmm. don't realize that that was probably attempt number five or attempt number well, six absolutely absolutely yeah wow and um was there um uh like a, a point that you decided to go into exteriors versus interiors or was that not really a thing was you know it's it's, uh, it's also funny because uh, i got into the the automotive program just barely my so my second year that sophomore Okay. As we're going up okay. in the, the the U.S. system, okay. Um, but I actually really wanted to do product design. Okay, I loved product design. Yes. I loved the diversity of it. And I was like, cars for thirty years. I mean, it's a bit boring, isn't it? Um, but but because it was rare to get, it was a you know you had a one third chance to get in, and you can always go back to product. I thought, well, best I best I try this, um, and then through my my career I've worked on both um, but just uh, maybe through the just through the process of, of starting at four starting the advanced working on you know some show cars uh, mostly exterior um, well actually all exterior and advanced um, and then going through the different studios Lincoln and and truck studio and, and things like this um, I was always on exterior okay um, then I did some interior um, on some minivans, uh, which is not so exciting. Yeah. Uh, but it was good to get that experience. Okay. Uh, because at that time, I was mostly kind of on this exterior course. Okay. And, I, and I do really like to take on different challenges okay. and, and try to be a more well-rounded uh, designer. So I've done some, and, and of course I went to Johnson Controls okay. for four years. And that was actually Primarily to- interior stuff. Yeah, and that was to kind of boost also my interior knowledge. Um, and you know, kind of get more of that, you know, on, on uh, in the portfolio and on the CV. Johnson Controls is a they're a, they're a supplier, or they they are um, now they they've been bought by uh, is it Yan Fang, um, um, and and they've they've kind of what I understand they've they've taken the business back to because their original uh, business model was doing control units for buildings. Like okay. skyscrapers for right. like air conditioning units yeah, and yeah, yeah. some kind of control systems for that, um, and they've kind of gotten out of the automotive business. Oh right, okay. Uh, but were they were they very much involved in? Because I've seen I've seen um, I'm pretty sure it was them uh, doing like a um, not a fair, but um, they were showcasing some of their products. And is it is it mainly like um, uh, like? IP tubs and stuff like that, or, or no? Actual, well, it's me. so if if you go uh, to like Frankfurt or Geneva or, or Paris, which are closed now, um, they'll they'll have a booth. And normally, it's invite only. But when I was there, most of their booth is like uh, seat mechanisms, okay. or you know that, that that's where they make their business. Okay. So um, you know the the I'd say the bean counters in the company are really looking at getting you know solid business so they're looking at like seat frames and, okay. and things like this not very exciting for designers okay. but I was fortunate enough to be working with the um, in, in the design department as the as the leading innovation okay uh, and we did a project called sensory now this is going back 2003 2000 2002 2003 okay. time frame and what we what we did was we said we did a big a, a big research 
Yeah. Uh, figure like 90% of your driving uh, sensory is visual. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. But how can you redistribute that? Because your your eyes sometimes trick you. And there are all the, you know, the, the, there's the classic example on, on YouTube of the people passing the basketball around and the gorilla walks yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people don't see it. But that's an actual fact. Okay. You, you see things, but your brain may not recognize it, especially if, especially if you're sensory overloaded. Okay. So we said, well, how can we redistribute things? And we did all this research and we looked in the military. Gaming was an, another great source, some of the gaming um, technology that was, was coming up. And we did this project called Sensory. We presented it uh, in, in Frankfurt, I think it was 2000, I want to say 2003. Um, and the bosses at the time were like, what's this crap? You know? Yeah. We, we, you know, we need to be making money. We need to be doing seat mechanisms. Uh, Mercedes came in, this is fantastic. This is what we expect from our, our tier one suppliers, this kind of creativity. Uh, uh, BMW, same thing. Brilliant. Love it. Uh, Fiat, we want this in our show car. So uh, I went down with a couple a couple people to Torino for six months and worked with the fantastic uh, experience, by the way, worked with the uh, Fiat design team to integrate these concepts into the Trepiuno, which became the, was, was the show car for the Fiat 500. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it, it was just like, and it, but it was really funny because on one hand, um, you know, some people in the company are like, why are we doing all this fluffy, you know, crap when, you know, we, we really need to get some nuts and bolts and get some business and, and this and everything else. But this, the, the OEMs were like really, really positive about it. Wow. So it was, it was, it was a really interesting experience. Awesome. <laughs> So, so you, but this was very much a, from a technological standpoint rather than a, a physical. Uh, it was because we we also contact suppliers and we were we were I think one of the first to really look at touch surfaces. Yeah. And I think in the future touch surfaces are going to be everywhere. Everything. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's you guys were looking at that early two thousand. We had a already, we had yeah. a prototype. Okay. We had a prototype and it was called Alexen. Yeah. Um, and it was basically there was like an X Y grid underneath fabric. Yes. And you could swipe it and act it like a touchpad. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, we're doing all sorts of things like this. Um, we were do we we're doing a lot of HMI stuff before HMI was a was a thing, was, right. was an acronym. Right. You know what did we call it then? Uh, no, not HMI. Sorry, UX UI. UX UX UI. Yeah. yeah. We 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 did for the the trip, you know, the whole interface of the screen and the cluster, and the idea was to give the car like a bit of personality. Okay. So when you turned it on. Like the, the the gasoline level and the oil would just kind of like bobble around and then yeah, settle down. Yeah, things like Animation. That. Yeah. If you're going too fast, it could warn you if you want to, you know, it, it was, it, it came to life. Okay. Now that's everywhere. Yes. There, that was, that was new stuff. Wow. You know, that was, that was, well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was did 16, you, 17 years ago. Did you not ago. feel out of, like out of your depths at all with, with that? I did because a lot of the stuff we did, they're like, you know, the, the other groups were like, well, that's, that's 20, 25 years out. Okay. Ironically, 10 years later, um, like, for example, we did um, what's, what's called the Stau car, yeah. which was basically adaptive cruise control. Okay. Right? Oh, that's 20 years out. 10 years later, it's in production. Wow. You know? We did a lot of with um, augmented reality. So... Um, Basically, your screen, your your windscreen, or some indicator, as you're looking through it, also acts as a display, and maybe you need to take an exit, and it flashes the exit, and the exits in real time and through your windscreen, and but it's it's indicating to you visually, um, or you know where things are. You want to go to a McDonald's or, or whatever. Oh, there's one here. There's one here. But showing you physically, and also directions, navigation directly in 3D, floating in front, you know, like heads up, yeah. but to the next level. Okay. And link with telematics and stuff. We were doing all this stuff. Whoa. And it was, it was really pioneering stuff at the time. So it was fun. But other people in the company, uh, let's say, saw it as uh, maybe didn't see a strong business case or saw it was, was maybe not, not realistic. Okay. Um, so uh, it... Uh, 
it kind of fizzled out. Okay. <laughs> and that, then and then I fizzled out <laughs> out of the company. Right. And that, so so that so that all came to an end. And then and then is that when you branched out on your own? Or? That's right. So okay. I, I I worked with a partner, um, and we started a consultancy, and it went it went actually really well, um, considering. And um, so, it, it was this where we? Sorry, where are you based now? So I was um, I was kind of floating around because I just had my laptop, mm -hmm. and I could be anywhere. And I spent some time snowboarding in, in Switzerland when I could. But I was kind of like on this um, kind of ro I was kind of a nomad. Yeah. Right. But I could just and that's the other that's the beauty about technology today. I have my laptop. I could do the sketches. Yeah. And I could just. Pop it up and, and, and go. So I I was in um, Brazil yeah. for um, was it two two months? Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was having a great time. Yeah. Um, but the company was was based in in England. Okay. Um, as as an entity. Okay. As, as a legal entity, um, but we we were doing we did some. It was prim primarily sketch work and you know okay. some modeling, uh, digital modeling, but. Um, one one project went to a full size and, and, and a prototype, okay. which was a, a nice 650 horsepower mid-engine supercar. Right. We did for an English company that unfortunately never never saw the light of day. Okay. Like many projects don't. Um, but yeah, we, we did we did work for some of the you know some sketch work for Peugeot, Kia, Hyundai, now, some of the big names. How does how do those sort of things come about? Because it's, that sort of thing now is very very difficult to do. You need to get on the supplier list, and in order to it, get on the supplier list, you need to have a business That's true, it, it, exactly. And there's ISO and all this uh, some compliance. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, Back in the day, I think you it could just give was it was easier. Whiskey and, and he well, would... you, and, and you know you knew people, and okay. and they maybe recommend you, and okay. they throw you a bone and. Okay. You know, I think there's still there's still a lot of that in the industry, but okay. uh, but you're right. Um, it is it is harder to, especially as a a small independent, to really kind of get into the big okay. the big companies. With regards to that sort of thing, James, like, um, do you were you were you basically just selling? Sketches, or are you selling ideas? Or, well, uh, sketches you... are ideas, right? Okay, right. Yeah, and, and that, that's a funny that's a funny story because. Um, we we would concentrate on the ideas, and when I worked in Asia, and we got an outside supplier to support, I I, I said at this stage I don't care, I don't want to see beautifully illustrated renderings that you would mount on your on your wall as a as art. Okay. I want to see ideas. Okay. Because that's what you're paying for. Okay. But in 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 that part of the world, they they really like the finished renderings. Okay. So we were paying huge money to do like they like six original renderings, then down to three, and then down to one. Okay. You know, all views, but still very, very low um, creativity content. Okay. And I said, no, no, no. I want to see fifty sketches, and these can just be ballpoint pen sketches. This is now when you are in the other, when you are commissioning. So this. now okay. I'm going forward okay. when I was working in China. Okay. And we were commissioning outside studios, okay, okay. and because they were used to working with China, they would do these labor-intensive, beautiful renderings. Mm. But but that's not the point. The point mm. is, um, you want to generate, you want to see ideas, okay. right? As a as a the person working on a design project, I want I want to see ideas okay. that I can adapt. Yes. Um, so I, I kind of try to put that, but it was it was tough to change. Uh, because the boss is there, like to see the finished. Okay. You know, they want to see the car before it becomes a car. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And where designers can, as you know, can quickly look at a ballpoint pen sketch, yes. a little uh, doodle, and say, "Yeah, you know what? That there's something there. We can develop that. We can do something. That's going to be fantastic." Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, what was I going to say? Um, you've. Were you that that was primarily the stuff that you guys were doing as your as your own company selling selling mostly ideas. sketch work mostly so sketch work okay so it wouldn't be that you guys would finish um, finish a model or something no like so um, one company we we went to an interior digital model yeah um, that we we sent out and then this one company like I said the supercar okay for this English company we actually did a clay model okay a full size 
Um, and is that something that you would then enlist um, your own modelers, or would they say we've got a we've got a group of? Guys? Well, we we went to a, a a supplier company. Okay. And so because also we need a studio, okay. right? Clay Studio is yes. not something you can just pop in your living room. Yes. Um, but we we basically rented a space, okay. and they had modelers that we we. Uh, Commissioned. Was this in Coventry? Or? No, no, this was in Cologne in, oh, in, in okay. Germany. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Mega. And then, yeah. and, then, um, and then it came to a, a, a production prototype. Yeah. Um, and at that, at that stage, we were basically just doing it for the project because our, um, the, the funding was, let's say the funding was running out. Okay. But when you have passion for a project, and we, we, we put a lot of free time into that. Yes. Um, but at the end, we did get a running prototype, interior, exterior, yes. carbon fiber body. Yeah. Um, you know, got a photo, sh- uh, you know, the shooting in the studio and all that. Um, but as, as you know, you know as well as I, uh, car industry is, labor, is cost intensive. It's very, and very money, expensive. And money yeah. goes fast. Yeah, so just it, it, it just didn't, it didn't work out. But, it what, was a shame. But. What what I was always what I was always quite intrigued about is that um, you know in in a in a situation now where you've got a consultancy and you start doing work for other companies, I can understand um, there might be one a guy that wants to uh, that has this idea for um, uh, a limited run of uh, glass fiber sports cars and mm. he needs to he needs a design he needs a design and he needs sure. designers. I understand the business case there. What I still don't understand is, um, or maybe it's not clear for, 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 for people that haven't actually worked inside the business, is, is when a, a design team, like you said, you guys were doing work for, for Persia mm. and they've got their own designers already. Right. And um, it's like, how do you present the business? How, like if, if you were a, a, a studio director at Persia, for example, how do you present that case to your boss um, saying right, we, we got these great designers. We've got these but, great designers. But let's get but, these. But yeah, it's very simple. The more ideas, uh, and also, uh, as as you'll know, when you're in a company, um, you can kind of get locked in to that company culture. Okay. And bringing someone from the outside can give a fresh fresh. Uh, this is my spiel, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm selling okay. my service. Yes, yeah, so go for but it. But this, this is this gives a fresh uh, look. Yes. At, at you know your brand, okay, and okay. and maybe there's some ideas, and maybe there's a time when the company's looking to re not reinvent, but take its brand to the next level, okay, or you know um, they're looking for a new design language, right. that one's run its course, okay, um, and they're just looking for some fresh ideas that aren't maybe um, diluted by the by being in that in that. Uh, kind of company vacuum, okay. the company but culture. Do you not think? Do you not? Do you not think that it's possible to just say, forget everything that we have done in the past, and try and look at it from a completely fresh approach? So uh, when I was at uh, Cherry, yes, um, and, and this company didn't have a strong brand identity. It was all over the map. Yes. Um, because it, it was, you know, it's a starting starting company. It was, it was quite a young company. Okay. Um, but they also, um, there is this kind of copy culture. Yes. As, in China, in, yeah, for sure. Yeah, in, in most uh, startup, you know, if you look at the other countries that were starting out, there, there's, in history a lot, that's kind of how they start out. So China's emerging, but there is a, there is a, a, a copy culture there. It's, it's getting better, but I certainly um, noticed that. And... So, especially with Cherry, I said, okay, we need to kind of set this on a new design direction. So what we did was we, we told the designers, um, I don't want you looking at, you know, your favorite BMW or, or Porsche or, or whatever. I want you to generate ideas based on this new design language, which was called uh, hydrodynamic surfacing. Okay. All right, which is a fancy name for basically like uh, f- fluid, fluid, sculpture. uh, uh, sculptural. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so we wanted them to basically go through this journey where they drew inspiration from other elements and not from the auto industry. Because if you want to avoid someone copying, then take that reference point away and, and make them look at nature, make them look at 
uh, traditional Chinese uh, cultural symbols or, or these things and translate that into your design. And that's what we did. Um, and we did a car called the Cherry TX, which was a show car uh, that won an award, um, Car Design News Award, okay. uh, back uh, 2012. And we, we brought that to production. Yes. And the thing is, um, there was because what you'll do in market research if you show a uh, in China that all the the people in the market research are trying to figure out what car you copied oh that looks like a Ford to me or that looks like okay. this or that and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. in this one they're like oh that that looks quite original okay so but it was it was changing the mindset of the designers what what I you know we talk we we learn about these things at university you know to, and and uh, and and a lot of uh, designers talk about this. They're certainly sold this way in, in the press. Um, like I took my inspiration from the willow tree in the right. you know, Enchanted yeah. Forest. But the thing is like, at some point there needs to be a level of credibility with the connection to the automotive uh, form language. Absolutely. And, and that's very much where like, you know, sometimes it's not an easy thing to, to, to truly get right, is it? Absolutely. So what you're doing is you're doing all this inspirational work and then you've got to bridge it back to an actual viable product. Okay. Right? Yes. Um, and and we, we were able to do that. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a body side sculpture, which is basically a kind of parabolic shape. Yes. Um, and that was kind of drive from when a ship or a duck or whatever is going through the water and creates the wake. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, and if you look at nature as well, uh, if you look at, like, for example, tree branch or even the human body, um, it's it's proportionally segmented. Okay. So as, as your arm goes out, it gets smaller. But there's a certain proportion, a mathematical proportion based on that. And there's a thing called arithmetic progression. Okay. Which is basically how how nature builds. Yeah. And we looked at all this, wow. you know, and it, it's basically, you know, you also know the golden mean or the golden yes, rule. This, yeah, the golden the, ratio. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you look at like a snail shell, okay. that is an that is a, a arithmetic progression. Okay. If you look at it, there's an, you can actually um, have a mathematical calculation and each segment will be mathematically correct to the previous segment. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, and then we were looking at all this stuff, but then you're right, then getting it back yes. to the car. And you, you do it in... in uh, in stages or? yeah yeah okay and and at the end what we would do we do presentation would say here's our our design language hydrodynamic surfacing and I would to to kind of reinforce that point it's about we, we want to really treat the surface we, we, we develop the clay models we do it by hand and we really want we really fine-tune the surface like um, and I use the metaphor of a waterfall okay where where the water falls down over millennia, yeah. um, the, the the rocks get nice and smooth and sculptured, wow, right? But on the sides, on the cliff, they're all jagged and rough. Yeah, yeah. We want that beautiful, smooth, sculptured feeling in our cars. So, and then then you describe the process, how you got there. Well, we looked at nature. We wanted the designers to to forego looking at their favorite cars because it's too much influence, too much chance to copy. We want to look at nature. We want to look at um, these other elements. And then derive from that uh, shapes uh, or, or features that we can apply to the to the car. The other good example was was called the it was the ripple. In the front grille, if you see that car, it's got the the logo, mm. which is an oval, mm. and then the the radiator bars are radiating out as if it's a ripple. Yeah. Right. Did Very you do unique. That with grasshopper. Yeah. Is that before the grasshopper thing? Because like, oh, I don't know the grasshopper. Uh, gra grasshopper. I, is I know this, the inside. The, but. Uh, no, 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 no. The gr grasshopper is this uh, parametric modeling plugin for Rhino that uh, okay, the industry know. is co completely. You know, they've they've got a total hard on for. I mean, it's it's kind of calmed down again now. But it was primarily uh, like when the, uh, uh, Renault brought out a concept car that had like this. Uh, I think it was. I can't remember which one it was, but it was a big long coupe, and it had the the surfacing was like um, hexagons. Ah, yes, it's silver. Yes, fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, fantastic. so that was done with yeah. Grasshopper, and oh, then, okay, and then the whole industry was like, "What is this 
this magic thing. Right. You know, so, I, I didn't know. Okay, I don't okay. see. I, I, you're more tech savvy than I am. Okay. I don't um, know how to do it, but it's uh, right. yeah. We, we, no, we, well, we, we did it all by hand, all but by hand, okay. uh, but but you know, there's and it's nice to have a story, especially in China. Well, storytelling is storytelling, is and I always did this, even at school. And this this actually, I think, was one of the things that made me stand out and get the job. Was I just didn't have a a, a, a styling exercise. Okay. I did uh, in, in 1992. I did a uh, an off-road electric vehicle okay. using the torque of the electric motor, which produced the most torque at low end, yes. um, to, you know, a- applied to a, a, this kind of SUV buggy yes. uh, type thing. And it had concepts. It had tires yes. that when it was in the mud were, were full, yeah. but then when it went onto the road, the idea was the hub would, would rotate and squish the tire Whoa. so it would get taller yeah. but thinner. So there's okay. less rolling resistance, okay. right? Okay. And I don't know how these work, yes, but, yeah. but, uh, but I was thinking conceptually. Yes. And the nice thing is I could tell that story yeah. when I presented. Okay. It wasn't like, well, here's my car and it's got like okay. this shape and this yeah. form and this. Yeah. I'm like, here's this car and it's got these concepts behind it. So it, was, it worked out really well. How that is a very, very underrated skill. And it's something that I'm, uh, I probably, I'm not very good at. But I've noticed there's certain designers, particularly, it's usually at director level that have really mastered that art because you have to, you, you, it, it makes the audience um, connect with that product in a way Absolutely. that they wouldn't have otherwise. Absolutely. It's like, why does this look this way? Right. You know, someone told me very early in my career, when you present, consider your audience. Okay. You know, if you're presenting to designers, yeah. you can say, oh, this is cool or this shape or the tumble home or, yeah. you know, all the all these words that we use. Yeah. Um, but if you're presenting to engineers or the general public, um, you, you need to engage them, but you need to talk their language. Okay. You know, and, and that, that's also really, because what we do, not only design, we also have to sell. Yes. Selling yeah, yeah. is a big part of what we do. Okay. Either you're selling your sketches to management yeah. or you're selling designs to the public. Okay. Um, is, that, is that something that you think that um, you've got better at over the years or is it just something? No, much better. Came? I was terrible okay. Okay. Uh, at presenting. Okay. I, was, I, was a, a, I was a disaster. Okay. Um, I, was always, I always really was um, interested in coming up with concepts. Okay. Um, even at Ford, there was a show car called the Lincoln Mark X. Okay. Um, it was preview for this, this, this production car. And I had this idea where um, there's a, a material called a, a electrochromic. You know this where, um, and they, I guess they have it on Japanese bullet trains. Okay. They have the window, you look out, you push a button and it goes opaque. Oh, wow. It's like okay. a silver yes. kind of film or yes. yeah, um, yeah. however it works. Yeah, Again, yeah. I'm not technical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, that'd be cool for a sun visor. Embed that into the top of the windscreen so you and you have it in three bands. So you could kind of toggle one, two, three, depending on the sun load. Okay. And it was in a, I was there at Ford a year. Okay. And then it was already they already put that in a show car. Wow. That was a great idea. Okay. And I, so I always I always loved not just sketching uh, shapes and proportions. Yeah. That's kind of a given these days. But what's the what's the reason behind this vehicle? What are the concepts? What's new about this? Okay. What's making this from a styling exercise into a design exercise? Okay. okay. Like a ho- more holistic approach. Absolutely. Okay. Cuz designer style or sorry, style is style. Okay. I think designers problem solve okay. and, and, and innovate. Okay. That's the kind of my, okay. that's my feeling. Okay. Mm-hmm. James, you've got uh, a bit of a reputation for being an all-around nice guy. <laughs> and uh, at least from the people that I've spoken to, and obviously I met... Not, uh, not, not with everyone I can share, well, but, okay. but that's nice to hear. <laughs> I, but but I, I, I've, I, I don't know, I've, your, your name's come up a few times and I've never heard any, any, any bad things spoken well, about nice you. And in particular... You've been quite, I, I, as, as, I, as, as you know, I spoke to Alan last week and uh, he right. was your former um, uh, employee. or um, Show car in, expert. Show car <laughs> expert. Um, and I, you know, he was, he was not just, he was talking about not just the fact that you are a nice guy in general, but actually that you very much promoted this um, sense of, you know, we're a team. It's not all about me, me, me. And that there's actually been a few instances when you guys would be at a motor show, for example, journalists would be talking to you and you'd be like, well, hang on a second, speak to 
Allen, for example, mm. he was the guy that Absolutely. actually did this exterior. Absolutely. Give credit where credit's due. That's not a common thing in our business. And I, I wonder... No, like, I think it should be. Is, it, is, it, is that something that um, you've just intuitively always felt? Or did you have like leaders that, that you respected and, and they did the same thing with you? Well, there's that. Okay. Uh, I've had some, some, you know, I've had a lot of bosses. Okay. I've had some good. Um, that have inspired me and the best bosses I always had were the ones where you were excited to work on this project okay. you were motivated to sketch you know um, and, and that, that, that boiled down to the person a lot at the end of the day a design studio if you represent it and you have to go to the press and stand in front of the products that the studio is producing yes. um, it, it's also in your self-interest I believe to make sure that the designers are passionate they're engaged. They're working on a, a you know project, hopefully that they like. I you know sometimes you don't. Not everyone gets to do the show car, but I always try to make sure that someone's engaged and working on something that they're they're into. And also as a boss, trying to give everyone uh, that sense that what they're working on is the most important thing, okay. because all these pieces come together to make the the team and the reputation of your design department because all those people are designing parts that represent the company so I, I think it's fundamental there's no point in having the greatest design uh, studio in the world if people don't want to go to work or aren't passionate or uh, you don't enjoy what they're doing um, this the, I mean this is to me is is quite clear <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, but, it's super clear to me as well. But, I, but I, I've also had my challenges where okay. it hasn't been that way. Sure, sure. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's, um, but that, that's a really mature outlook to have. And I wonder as well if that's probably because you've also had your time to shine in the past. that you. Well, this is it as well. I've been really fortunate in my career. I have bounced around a lot. Uh, I always enjoy new challenges, new things, new cultures, new experiences. Um, but I, I also feel like I've, I've done more than I ever dreamed as that young boy going to school and saying, I, never, I will never be able to do that. So I just feel like um, I also I, I want to give that uh, back a little bit. And my, my role was to ensure that designers had the, the necessary resources um, and support from the leadership to do the job to the expectation, which was high. Um, and I was there to, you know, I put, I put a lot of cars together to, to kind of bump them, you know, you know, they're a pinball going around and, and if they're gonna go, go into the hole, I, I can give them a little bit of a paddle. Okay. And not, okay. not in a bad way, in a good yeah, way, yeah, in a motivational, yeah. uh, or, or there's a, a technical issue. Okay. Um, you know, we were, they were, they were loading these, I came by the designer once and he was working on the alias model and they were pushing all the headlamp uh, componentry inside uh, towards the, the center of the car. And you know, you want everything to look as wide as possible. I said, well, what are you doing? So all oh, the engineers, you can't, you can't load the bezel. You can't load from how, you know, you know how lamp yeah. goes, but for the, yeah. you have the lamp and you got the bezel and they have to come together. Yes. And normally it's a load from behind. Okay. A rotational load. They're like, what? So yeah, have the supplier make sure it's, so you load it this way and, and then, you can, then you can circumvent that, that technical issue. Okay. So uh, things like this, I, yes. I just bring that as an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and th that was my job, okay. to also bring experience yes. um, to ensure that the product was as, as good as it could be. Okay, okay. I mean, I think, I think that, that that is a really healthy approach and that's really what, you know, somebody at kind of, that sort of senior management level slash director level should be doing, you know, negotiating a pillar positions, for example, you know, and, uh, but I think more importantly, inspiring a team and making that team excited about being part of that team. Absolutely. This should be the best job in the world. Yeah, it should be. If you love cars or if you love design. And it can, it can be, it yeah, can be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and I think I think it is, but it's also a tough job. It's you know you have deadlines, you have egos, uh, you have you know there's a lot of 
you know, uh, challenges for sure as well. Okay. Um, in, 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 in design in general, I think. Yes. But without passion, uh, it doesn't work in, in my, my view. What, um, would you say that you are, I mean, you, you said, said earlier on that you're happy with, you know, you did things that you never dreamed of doing. Do you think that um, getting to the level that you've done, like when I say that, I mean, at, at sort of direct level, do you, would you say that that was very much um, the, the, the reason for you being able to do as many things as you could have done? Or do you wish at times that you had maybe not pursued those sort of executive level positions and remained more creatively hands-on? Uh, no, I think um, <laughs> as a as a designer, you also know you've got a shelf life. Um, mo- most um, w- when I see the kids coming to school, I'm like, oh, oh, oh they're really good, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I'm like, okay. maybe I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm not sketching anymore, okay. <laughs> competing with this talent. Okay. Um, okay. And, and I think at a, at a certain stage, maybe you need to consider um, you're not going to win um, all the. The design contest. Okay. When I first went to Ford, I was I was winning projects. I was winning contests. So it is like in that sort of culture, it's very much a competition. It's absolutely like we're sketching for this. You're put all your put absolutely all your on the wall. yeah. You put them all up. You present, and at the end of the day, someone's going to pick one of the sketches to go as a theme. You want it to be yours, okay? Right. Um, but as as you start losing <laughs> yes. more and more, you start to realize, well, you know what? Um, the next generation. Maybe they have the fresher ideas, but I can bring experience. I can bring, hopefully, leadership or, or these other um, parts of, of the, the design environment, the, okay. the design studio environment to, to the mix. So for me, it was kind of a natural progression, okay. but I did try to kind of hang on to the creative okay. for as long as I could. Because that's where I, I, that's what I really enjoyed. Do you feel that you ever compromised yourself from a, from a personal standpoint to, to achieve certain things that you... I, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It's something integrity is something incredibly important to me. Okay. Um, I've probably suffered okay. <laughs> for because not compromising. Okay. Okay. But you know, there's certain principles. I could tell you stories where um, the engineers were saying there's a famous. I, I won't go into the company stuff, but there was um, a gap condition, just a simple gap condition. Mm. But I wanted this product to have the best quality, and considering the the requirements of the company, um, and they had this kind of uh, best practice uh, situation. They they said it has to be like this, and I said, well, no. If you if you make the headlamp above the the metal, ah, but there's a parting line on the headlamp, and you could they get sharp, or you could see it and everything. And so there was this back and forth, and I literally thought I might lose my job okay. over it. Okay. Um, but at the end. We found a solution that became a patented solution, okay. and we were able to to get the the really nice tight uh, execution okay. that that made the and and it's funny because at the end we we milled out two sides of a hard model right. and we said here's the here's the required solution and here's the design solution. Okay. And when they saw the required solution, they were shocked and they said, "We can't do that." I said, "Well, that that's your best practice." Okay. Uh, and best practice doesn't work every time for every situation. Okay. Uh, so that's a, I won't mention the company, okay. but okay, sure. that's one example. Right. But I tell you one thing, I, I, I was stirring up, and I probably took it too far, okay. but also when you work on something for two or three years, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden you feel someone comes up and they're, they're going to screw it up. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a quality issue. Yes. It's not even a subjective design issue. Yes, yeah. I... I I, I fight for these things. Okay. I fight for the product okay. uh, because I want the best product, and the best product okay. is 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 normally uh, best for the company. But you need. But to maybe be inf- I push it too hard okay. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to be informed to be able to have these conversations, to be able to have these these these, for lack of a better term. Well, the unfortunate thing, I I knew I was right. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. that, that was the that was the the. Okay. The downside, okay. right? Okay. I didn't have to prove anything. I okay. knew our solution okay. was the better solution. Okay. Okay. Um, 
And at the end, that's the one that went to production. Right. They ad abandoned that. Okay. They actually changed the best practice okay. <laughs> and they adopted the design solution. Okay, so the moral so, of that is like, you know, stick to, believe, like, believe in, uh, maintain what you believe in and maintain your integrity. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I think in integrity in this business okay. is, is, is super, especially right now. Okay. Especially right now. And also, um, but... I actually, I mean, that's one, that's one end of it, and then the other th the other end of it is is uh, is your team. You know that that obviously you've 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 worked hard to kind of look after over the years. The, I mean, I know there's been multiple um, teams that you've led. Mm. Um, was what, again was that was that more through examples that you had seen or? Um, you just wanted to, you, you. Well, I read a lot of books. Okay. You know, and I, I, I read a lot of books. And it's funny because you were talking, I, I, I saw a note that you meant about this start with why. Okay. Yes, you know? yes. I've yes, read yes, that. Yes. Okay. Uh, and yes. and I, a lot of books. And I, I just kind of also from this, Simon, this is my, Simon this is my thing. process. What I do is I'll, I'll take things from my experience. People who I work for, who I really uh, admired and, and really motivated me. Okay. Um, but then I'll also read a lot of books. And I just bring it all together mm -hmm. and then kind of kind of create my own a methodology. Okay. Um, okay. But, but also my method would, is something that you could read. You, you see all the time on LinkedIn stuff, um, you know, kind of good boss, bad boss or, yeah. or whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And I try to, I try to think, well, you know, I, I'm, I think I was maybe more of a good boss. Okay. Not everywhere, you know. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's the goal. Right. Okay. Um, and and you're also dealing with different personalities. Right. Not everyone's the same. Not everyone's a robot. You have some people that need to be really looked after and coddled. Okay. And you have you, you have others that need a bit of a kick. Yes. Right. Okay. And you've got to psychologically deal with all those personalities. Yeah, that's not. You easy. know, someone might not respect you for. Uh, your 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 method. So you have to you have to really then kind of nuance your way okay. into their personality. And it, the nice thing is you can do it because design is typically a small team yes. in the grand scheme of an automotive company. Um, but it, it takes a huge amount of energy uh, and work to basically uh, treat people as individuals. But it also gives you so much back. It's really uh, powerful the, the the effect that you have. Okay. And and at the end, when I was in China, China has a, a very high attrition rate. Yeah. Of course. And people just bounce if you know if they get five percent more, they're they're gone. Okay. Right. Um, I had the best attrition rate, meaning least leaving okay. of any department in the company. I had uh, one year I had like. I think it was 1.2. I don't know how they came up 1.2 okay, okay. <laughs> statistically, okay. but I had, uh, you know, very very low um, attrition rate. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's awesome, James. Um, I think on that we'll probably call it a day. Right. But or I'll just keep talking. The whole no, time. but no. That, I mean, that was uh, uh, it was it was really good to speak to you, and it was really nice to be able to speak to somebody at your level. And give your perspective on on uh, on you know things that the way that you've done things and, right. and uh, yeah so it was it was an absolute pleasure. Well, I, I appreciate the invitation. Thank you very. Thank much. you for having me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Cheers. yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. That was that was really interesting. I, and we uh, didn't even get into the the future of mobility. <laughs>